Welcome everybody to our next webinar here at JFT Brokers and also a warm welcome in the name of JFT Brokers. My name is Stefan Frodichowski as always and just call me Stefan. My last name is really too complicated. Um, so anyhow, so in, whenever you want to get in touch with me, so first name is fair enough. Yeah, today we have the 27th of uh, September 2018. Uh, more or less only three remaining months this year, but um, we know there has been already a lot of stories this year and um, looking around to latest news, not really latest in terms of last minutes uh, um, within the last couple of hours, but uh, what's around, um, around people uh visiting other people politics is really getting crazy um at least uh, from my perspective but uh, that is not what matters what matters is what we do for trading and today once again it's around uh, it's around uh, stock trading so we we really talk um a second time here about uh, stock trading we have started to develop a trading strategy around stocks and yeah we simply want uh, to proceed here and i can already announce that we need a third time to finalize everything um, but anyhow you will see we will come already to a really good um, stage but i'm not happy enough to say that's it there should be something more and um, i know we will get it but anyhow so it's around stock trading um that that's uh, uh, obvious and uh, to really s start here right now um just uh, the the, op or the the usual things i have to announce uh, the one is that you may find uh, the recordings um or you may you will find the recordings on the jfd youtube channel and even for the part one um it's already online of course uh, so just press youtube jfd in google then you will immediately be um, forwarded to the right place and second announcement as always um, is uh, the next slide uh, that you know um, we talk about trading strategies here and uh, finally you might, may adapt exactly those kind of strategies but uh, obviously uh, you trade on your own responsibility as always and uh, think that's uh, self-explaining so having said those things let's come to our real topic um the structure for today is that i first will a little bit recap what we have done um last time so it's a little bit like in a movie um that uh, at the beginning of uh, the second uh, you will hear something like what has happened so far so it's a little bit like that so uh, i will recap our three um, basic strategies you may cross trailing stop and high trading uh, that was a name we used for yeah using highs days since last high for uh, entries and exits uh, of that particular strategy and <clears throat> we 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 came already that far that we know for all three strategies and uh, i call now here trailing stop even a strategy although it's more a mes methodology of uh, how to use a stop loss but in this case we use it as a full standalone training strategy the next step is obvious um, we have three elements or three degrees of freedom or three different methodologies uh, the easiest thing to do next is to combine those and and thinking okay the combination of those might enhance our trading strategy so might improve uh, everything and what we have finally is um, with our three strategies we have four combinations um, three pairs and the uh, fourth one is uh, all three together so um, the, those are the four possible combinations and we will look to those as well and 
once again we will do it <clears throat> for one uh, single stock company so it will be again apple um, and um, i have um, created some excel sheets for all the four kind of strategies and um, as you know if you have interest in those excel sheets just let me know uh, send me an email and later you will see once again my email address <clears throat> or just write uh, support of uh, jfd um, they will forward automatically those emails to me and i will make sure that you get those um, excel sheets the next step is same like, like uh, last week that we look not only to apple that we do the complete combination for all uh, 100 uh, stock companies which create the S&P 100. Um, in principle, I could go for the S&P 500 as well, but it's only because um, yeah, limited number is um, or limited resources. Let's call it that way. And 100 is still a quite well portfolio. So, um, and that's what we want. We want finally a stock trading portfolio, not just one stock company it should be the complete portfolio and as, as i mentioned there will be a third part so we have to discuss why and the, 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 the obvious reason is already written here why i'm still not happy enough to say that's it for stock trading st strategy for that portfolio you will see um, because i think that we can get a little bit better then we will be at the end of uh, that webinar. So we have three basic strategies. Um, and let me recap how do they wor work. Um, I'm not sure whether everybody has been in the last webinar, but it's good to, to still have in mind how those three individual strategies work. There's one which is called EMA Cross. So obviously it's related to an ema and what we do is that we look for the close of the previous day compared to the ema of the previous day and if the ema uh, if the price is above that ema we open a trade that's all and later when we have opened a trade so if there's a running trade we will not open any other trade on that specific underlying so that's just the start um, and normally we will not do anything for the next couple of days um, but that's that's the entry so we compare close to ema and then we still have the complete night um, time because we open the trade at the open of the stock market so practically um, let's say today at 11 p.m um, u.s market is closed um, then we can do the, that kind of comparison of the close to the ema and tomorrow at 3 30 german time um, we would open potentially the next trade that's all so we have enough time to decide it's it's extremely easy to do that you can even trade that kind of strategy manually you don't need any machine no uh, or expert advisor so of course if we have an entry we need an exit and the exit signal is simply vice versa so that means if it's a close not during the day it's a close of the day uh, we are below the dma then we will close our trade at the open of the next day so we have still a lot of time and even if the open would be once again above no we close um so that's a rule you you may think about slightly different rules but uh, we we have to fix them and uh, we have to define them because we want to calculate equities uh, around those kind of strategies what's obvious here we don't have a stop loss normally uh, you 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 hear from me hey no trade without stop loss for stock trading it's okay you can do it because you can never lose more than you have invested and that stock company is overnight at zero uh, so more or less vanished from the markets um, okay it's not nothing is impossible um, but it will not hit all the 100 and if it would hit all the 100 i think then we have a complete different kind of problem an even more severe problem i would assume 
um, and we would not anymore um, maybe be interested in trading. So we invest always $1,000 per share and that um, gives us a position size of uh, the particular trade. So that's uh, everything for EMA Cross and the other will come um, a little bit more brief, just that we remind how we do our trading here. So if a trade is running, no new trade will be opened on that symbol. Finally, we look for all the 100 and we might even have 100 open trades. So EMA cross, uh, EMA cross was the one. The next one was just trailing stop, but now as a trading strategy. Uh, normally it's a methodology for stop loss, <clears throat> but here we use it simply for trading. What finally means, if we hit the stop loss today, we will open a new trade tomorrow. I know maybe no one would do it like that, uh, but it's a little bit education. It's it's a little bit how to to, to come up with those ideas and how to investigate. Uh, since we later will combine the strategies, uh, then it's once again really a methodology for stop loss managing. But anyhow, we, we have an initial stop loss and that is um, X percent below our entry. And for the next days, we just will look for the low of the previous day. And if that low of the previous day minus our X percent is now higher than our actual stop loss. Hey, perfect. Then we will shift our stop loss. So it will um, go north and north and north, um, at least if possible. And finally, our trade will hit the stop loss. Well, because there will be always a time uh, that any any share or any stock price will go south once again, and then it will naturally hit our stop loss. So. Now we have a stop loss, but anyhow, um, that's the, the trailing uh, methodology or strategy. And then finally, we have that, what I call here, high trading. So here it's a little bit more complicated, but it's a really mighty tool. We will later see that especially the, those that uh, trading with around the highs and how many days um, since last high, um, that this is maybe the most important part, part of our overall strategy. Therefore, I uh, repeat a little bit how we do it. We, we look always, when has been the last high within one year? That's what we look for. Maybe that last high is 30 days ago for a specific um, company. Okay. And now it depends on one value, that is those X days here. And let's say we have set that number to 32. So if the last high is older than our 32 days, we will not open a trade. So it should be um, smaller than that number. So maybe last high was just 20 days ago. Then, okay, we would open a trade. Perfect. And now it's a question when to close that trade. And we simply do it if the last high is older than two times that value. So for my example, uh, with X equals to 32. So if our last high would be now older than 64, we would close the trade. The good thing about those, this, that high trading is we will automatically filter those companies which go north, 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 north. Because if you finally want to go north, you need new highs. And if there is no new high within enough days, then hmm, maybe that company is not as strong as expected, or maybe it has changed its uh, uh, business model or whatever. Um, doesn't work anymore. Is that good? So then we will close the, that trade and definitely we will not open a new one the next day because we would not hit again the entry um, condition. So that's a nice way to do it. It's really a nice way that helps. Results for all the three strategies are the following. 
Uh, just as an example, and you know the kind of details we have had last uh, time. So we have those kind of equities, and I just want to illustrate uh, the equities for that the DSH stands for days since high, so that value uh, that X is here uh, 64. Uh, that's one equity, an EMA uh, in this case 320, and just a trailing uh, variant here with a stop loss of 16%. Just if we compare those uh, on one slide, then obviously we can see that um, just only trading with a trailing stop um, is, is the worst one variant here, because then the financial crisis, that period of time of 2008 to 2010, uh, um, yeah, would have hit us uh, enormously. So you see quite a big drawdown here. Um, but I think we know why. Because that kind of strategy is after hitting the stop loss, we buy once again the next day. Okay, that might be a little bit too simple uh, and a little bit too hopeful for the future that it goes always north. Um, and that's the reason why we have here a, a higher drawdown. But overall, all the three are not that bad. Um, good. And now it comes to the combination. And we uh, will investigate um, the variant EMA plus trailing, EMA plus highs, highs plus trailing. And finally, um, of course, we have uh, the one for uh, all three, all three together. Um, and um, one would expect that the last one, all three together, might be the best one. Let's see. I have created for all the four um, kind of combinations uh, Excel sheets, and let me introduce one of those, or uh, all, all of those. And we start with EMA and trading. And that's something how it looks like. So we um, we have an Excel sheet, and of course, uh, I will repeat myself. You can have those uh, uh, sheets here, and you you might even do your own uh, kind of optimization here for a single uh, stock company. I know. Finally, what I do here is later I will use one set of parameters. So in this case, EMA and stop loss and create the equities for all the 100 uh, S&P 100 companies and then combine them and have a single equity for all uh, for the complete portfolio. Maybe that's not something you can do that straightforward, but you can investigate a single, um, single values, or single companies um, by your own. I will not optimize those individually. And let me tell you why. I will not optimize, let's say, Apple different to uh, Oracle, different to McDonald's. I could do, and finally, I could even do that kind of walk forward methodology, but still, we have the problem of not the best statistics. The reason is, yeah, we, we go here for D1 prices, D1 charts, D1, D1 trading. We, we, we have a single action per day maximum here. Um, and that means our statistics finally is for 10 years, we have about 2,500 candles. Okay, that's not a small number, but it's not a high number. So, and now op to optimize the 100 individual, of course, is possible, but, but there's still a risk for overfitting, over optimization. Therefore, I want to use the 100 companies to enhance my statistics because then I have finally, so to say, 250,000 data points. And that's, yeah, that's a real high number. And therefore, I want to have um, not finally the companies to be optimized individually. But still, we can do. 
So um, you will already see that there are two yellow um, yellow marked uh, fields here, uh, and uh, you, you may change those those numbers. And uh, just to illustrate what happens uh, in this case, uh, yeah, the equity is already not that bad. Uh, um, and what I finally always look is that value for Opti. Uh, as a reminder, Opti uh, combines two elements of the equity. So the equity is the one we see here in blue. And um, the two elements which are combined within that key figure of T is the one is the slope of the equity and the other one is the drawdown within that equity. And normally what we try to achieve is, yeah, best would be high slope. So that number should be a big, um, yeah, should be really a high number and um, drawdown ideally zero so um, so that number we want to minimize and therefore we combine the two numbers um, by dividing them and uh, since my um, um, nominator is um, max drawdown therefore I want to minimize that key figure opti and if you change here for example to EMA 80 um, then you can see, oh, Opti is uh, more than doubled, so it's uh, bad or worse than before. And you can see it visually with your eyes, just looking to the equity as well. But when it finally comes to, to the details, then uh, it's much, sometimes better to, to go directly into the numbers. So even um, 320 is uh, worse than the other one. So that's maybe not that bad here. And if I change um, the stop loss value, a um, little bit worse and in the other direction. Okay. Oh, um, let me check with four. Okay, four, five is a little bit better. And maybe it goes in the same direction. No, uh, with higher numbers. But anyhow, so that kind of equity is already quite well. So don't forget what we have. Um, it's just two parameters. And um, as you remember from last time, even if we change those numbers in really in, 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 in ranges um, of a multiplier, say go um, with a factor of two and think about normal um, indicator parameters, would you change those parameters by a factor of two? Normally, no. But here, it works still, which is really impressive. It works quite well. Even if we change those numbers from 5 to 10, that is a factor of 2 in the one direction. And uh, if I go from 5 to 2.5, then it's a factor of 2 in the other direction. So those kind of strategies here are extremely stable, which is good. That means maybe there is no that high need for any optimization. It's maybe more just a matter of creating that kind of portfolio, which really counts, which really matters. So anyhow, what we can do is we can change those two numbers. And I have changed now the two numbers for all the 100 companies, for all the 100, and then looking for the complete um, the history of about 18 years. And the result is again that kind of funny picture, kind of funny graph. Um, let me, it's the same like uh, last time, but uh, of course now with two um, parameters which have changed to, to create uh, those numbers. Let me try to explain what, what I sh um, show here. Um, a single line here within that uh, Excel sheet is, is a line for one company, WFC. I have no idea which company is it. The next one would be Oracle, uh, I know. But the WFC, I have no idea. And I have calculated an equity, a complete one, with initial stop loss of 4% and EMA of 40 and that company would have um, lost $1,700. Uh, okay, it's a loser. Um, and then the next one. And then I sum them up. 
I have ordered that kind of list by parameters like stop loss and EMA. So we start with all the com uh, all the equities with um, stop loss for EMA 40, and then some and ordered by do they earn money or yet uh, I know uh, and, and how much money they earn within those 18 years. And what we see is that half of the half of them is losing, and that means here we go first with uh, summing up all the 100 companies, the results of all the 100 companies, we go here uh, to the south. So it's ex losing. But the other 100 would earn more than the other one have uh, lost. But anyhow, it's not the best one, uh, which is obvious. And I just use that kind of chart here to illustrate uh, the kind of behavior. So the first one would be um, EMA 40 and stop loss 4% initially, then initial stop loss 4%, but EMA 80, 160, 200, uh, and 320. So that's the logic. And then we go for initial stop loss 8%. Um, that group is 16% uh, and 32%. So what do we see? What do we realize? So using small EMAs, forget it. Uh, no chance. We don't get it uh, profitable. We need higher EMAs, and what we need is not too small numbers for the initial stop loss. Um, that's the logic here, or that's what we can see. One, one could even go for small initial stop losses, but then definitely we need we would need an EMA of 320. So we see within one picture, <clears throat> let's say how our two parameters work and what do they change. But as I mentioned, we want to have other combinations as well. And let me quickly go through those other combinations. So uh, we go for um, highs with uh, trailing. So that's a combination valid as well. So here we have that one number, days, since last high that is set here to 32 and you ch can change it and we have an initial stop loss value for our trailing stop and same story here let me change those values of course we get different kind of equities but even once again changing by a factor of two um, is not yeah gives not a really complete different kind of equity. It changes uh, the details, yes, but the overall behavior is first profitable and second similar, which once again means <clears throat> we have quite stable strategy, not depending hardly on um, or very much on, on our parameters and um, he going to other numbers for days since last high uh, that was uh, changed by a factor of two um, downside and upside here uh, 64 always quite well strategies um, so works good and we can have a look to the com uh, combined result here as well um, looking for the overall portfolio with the 100 uh, companies and uh, let's, that was highs together with trailing highs together with trailing that is this one here and we have the same kind of curve behavior but now it's a little bit better than before and you see my statement from the beginning the kind of highs using those highs is extremely good for our trading strategy. You see that we only rarely go south here, so we are really in the north, which is mean, or which means that the independent of our parameters, more or less, most of our 100 companies is earning money with that kind of strategy which is already really well. So combination highs together with trailing looks really great. Um, and that's what we can see here by a single view. 
Um, although it's always yeah the overall portfolio of the 100 companies, but it's working well, and um, in principle one would have a tendency to higher values, both higher stop loss as the initial stop losses for the trailing stop, and higher values for the day since last high uh, as entry and potential exit. Oh, we talk about exit. Let me say an additional word of what would be possible uh, if we look for the, those kind of strategies. As you can see, um, finally, we will go to the last variant that is EMA and highs. And especially for that one, um, I can, I can um, illustrate what I mean with we might have additional opportunities. In this case, for the combination and those Excel sheets works the following. For the entry of a trade, for, so for when we open the trade, both conditions have to be fulfilled simultaneously. So it's a, it's a logical and, meaning if we have highs and EMA as our um, methodologies, so we need to be above the EMA with uh, yesterday close price. <clears throat> and our last high is not allowed to be older than the specific number. And both conditions have to be fulfilled simultaneously. That's for entry. For exit, I do it exactly the opposite. One, if we violate one condition, the EMA or the high, we close the trade. So we have a logical or for the two. Of course, we could do it differently. We could say, okay, we close the trade only if there's a logical and both conditions have to be violated, then we would close the trade. It's just another possibility we have here. Um, so it's another variant we, we might use. I have not investigated those, but I want to mention. Now, less, the last uh, uh, two combination uh, variant is here, EMA plus high. Let's have a look here as well, EMA and highs. And um, OK, now we can change uh, the EMA value as well as uh, the days since high. Um, and uh, doing so, um, it's more or less always the same kind of uh, um, observation here. Um, I can change those numbers. I change the equities, uh, but it's always not that heavy uh, what happens here. So let me go here for lower numbers that we have at least a little bit more trades here. And um, so and now we have um, maybe even lower values for the EMA. Story, once again, the same. We can change the two numbers. The equities are extremely stable, which is a very important hint that we should go for that kind of strategy. Because if it does not depend on the parameters, then it means that we, we hit already with our trading logic, the fundamentals of those trading strategies. So just to have the idea of how we trade with it. EMA and with that logic of day since high means that we can be already profitable and it does not depend on the real the, the exact number. That is always extremely promising to go live with those kind of strategies because we don't have an overfitting. We have um, not not turned everything to the final up so that it's really good. Therefore, I like stock trading here. Of course, our, uh, we can have a similar view to uh, those curved equities here to look for the overall portfolio. And that's now highest plus EMA. And uh, now it looks uh, this way. It's a little bit more curved to the south as well. But overall, the profitability for the complete portfolio trading those 100 uh, is extremely good 
and especially if you go for higher <clears throat> you may well use then most of um, our companies would be profitable profitable individual as well but finally the only thing which matters is the portfolio because that's what we target for last combination is all three and um, now we have three yellow fields here and um, yeah I don't have to change those numbers. You know what happens, more or less nothing. Equity is quite well. Um, and this one is indeed one of the best with 400 of Opti. Um, we can change the numbers and um, maybe we get a better result. In this case, not. I think those numbers are already quite well here. Um, yeah. Uh, so it has already been uh, quite good numbers. So, um, same story, changing those numbers doesn't change the overall picture uh, that much, which is good. And we can have that um, curve chart here as well. Uh, now it looks a little bit more complicated because we have three degrees of uh, freedom, uh, which means we will have more um, more variants and uh, more groups here. Um, and you see, and I will not go into the details here, but the message is clear. It works. Here we have, I have changed uh, the stop loss from 8 to 32 in uh, multipliers of 2. Uh, EMA from 80 to 640 in steps of factor 2. And days um, so since last high, um, I think I only three values. Um, low four values, 16, 32, and so on. Um, but it works. It's very well. But now we will, should look to the real, the real portfolio and those kind of equities. So what I have done, I have added up for a single strategy, for a single set of parameters, all the individual equities, the 100, Adding those up is at the very beginning an Excel sheet with 300,000 lines. And then I combined everything to a single day for a single day. So all the trades which have happened at the same day um, will be finally only one line in the next Excel sheet. And um, that's all. So then it looks, for example, like this one. It's for illustration purpose, so don't, um, not illustration, um, wrong wording. Uh, what I mean is here um, that the line maybe is marked and sh sh it looks like uh, it's referring to this company uh, Merck in this case. It's not the case. It's just the sum of all uh, trades at the 11th of January 2001 for all 100 companies. Otherwise, the Excel sheet would be yeah uh, extremely heavy, so extremely um, high sized. But now let's go back here to what we have in the picture. We have a portfolio, 100 traded companies, and we what we see here is equity and balance. Equity and balance means blue is balance, red is equity. That means with floating losses or profits. In this case, most of the time we have floating profits. Um, and one reason behind that is, as I mentioned already in the previous webinar, we have that strong bias, which is supporting us extremely well here. And um, so blue is always closed trades and red is including the floating results of the open trades. Look into the equity, hmm, it's not bad. Um, of course, we have two times, or you may say one, two, three, four times with higher drawdowns, but overall, it's a quite well result. And we achieve for all four kind of combinations, similar and quite well and good results. 
let me don't go into the details of all the, of those. I have summarized everything in a single slide. Um, and then <clears throat> it look, looks like the following. Let me just describe how it's labeled. <clears throat> the first one is stop loss initial 16, um, EMA 320. That's the one combination. And um, the next one here is stop loss 16 with days since high 64. EMA, days since high. And finally, one example <clears throat> for um, the threefold combination. I don't want to go into the details. That's the reason why I don't zoom in into the equities. I want to guide you a little bit of what we see here. And honestly and obviously, all four look quite similar. There are differences, no question. Um, but not that diff uh, different, maybe as expected. Although we have three elements we use, we have different numbers. Hey, <clears throat> it's extremely similar. Although we have different logics behind. It's an interesting result. What does it tell us? It tells us that on the one hand, stock, tra stock trading is intrinsically profitable, at least for the last 20 years. And we know, um, although we don't have here price data before 2000 within those uh, equities, uh, all of us know that for the um, 20 or 50 years before, it was profitable as well. So thinking about the future, maybe all of us would expect the next crash. So maybe in one year, maybe all, uh, already in one month or maybe in five years, I don't know. So let's change our perspective a little bit. So what we try to do here is, okay, we want to trade stocks, <clears throat> but we want to be prepared for the next crash. Okay, so let me do another comparison in order to draw the right conclusions. Before we go that step, we should have a comparison to the benchmark first. Unfortunately, I did not find um, um, historical data for S&P 100. Uh, therefore, I do the comparison now with S&P 500. But I would be surprised uh, if, if the long-term behavior between the two, the S&P 100 and S&P 500, would be completely different. So same period, last 18 years. And I just picked one equity and in this case I even picked one with only a single parameter the days since high 64. Let's start with the benchmark. Of course what we know is financial crisis was really a disaster. So uh, S&P 500 uh, went down from 1,500 uh, 1, nearly to uh, 500. That was a crash. We have similar uh, between uh, 2000 2003 and uh, we have yeah minor crashes uh, even in the short term history that's uh, 2015 um about no not 2015 2015 is here uh, that was the beginning of the year sorry at the beginning of the year we have uh, in february january february that was uh, really a hard time for s p 500 but what about the overall benchmark and compared to our uh, stock trading um, strategy? So, for example, if we would have started in the year 2000, then we, the S&P 500 would have been at 1,500. So overall, in the next 18 years, let's forget what happens in between, uh, we would have gained 1,500 points. That's all. Um, on the other hand, here we have an increase, um, which is uh, 
even if you you start with a capital uh, starting uh, investment sum of about 50,000, which is needed here for that uh, strategy, uh, we would have gained um, additional three times that value or nearly four times that value. Not only one time, just four times uh, the same of amount we have uh, had invested. So that means we beat the benchmark, first thing, which is already extremely good. We beat the benchmark by far. That's good. But I personally, looking to the equities uh, of our uh, portfolio strategy, still I don't like those drawdowns within what we have here. Okay, we have managed because of our strategy um, to get much smaller drawdowns than our benchmark. That's good. But still, having an account going south from 50 back to 30,000, hmm, that's heavy. Um, so, what we need, we need a better managing system of those crash phases. And that was what I mentioned before. Going for the stock um, trading strategy is inherently good. And I have no problems to start with that tomorrow. The only thing what we need to be prepared is whenever it comes to crashes. So we, we need a good managing strategy of exactly that. We have already a good one. But I think we can do better. And I would like to have it a little bit better than what we have already. So what are our possibilities? Of course, one would be the already mentioned um, um, using more per meter, using them simultaneously or for individual um, uh, companies, but that might lead to an over-optimization. So I want to avoid that. Let me come to other ideas, which I will investigate. And that's the reason why we have part three for that strategy. When I introduced the day since high trading, I said we use a multiplier of two for the difference between exits, uh, entries and exits. That number, I think, I read in the sky. So directly out of heaven. I have no idea why I took two. Maybe that's not good. Maybe the number is too small. Because think about the company, okay, which has a new high, we open a trade, and then for a longer time just stays at that level. There's no real reason to, to sell that. So maybe we need other numbers here. So we need an investigation of different multipliers or different, or uh, in other words, of different kind of, of exits. It will still be a two parameter strategy, but still absolutely easy. Um, so that's one idea. The other one is I want to care about those, those crashes or those kind of situations. So maybe we sh can use something like days and high for entry and the EM, a smaller EMA only for exit. So then we would be kicked out of a trade immediately after price goes south. At least it's the hope. Let's see whether it works. Our third idea, if you look maybe to the S&P 500, there's one typical observation. And the typical observation is if it goes south, it goes faster south than later those periods of increase. So let's say the velocity or the speed, <laughs> so to say, to the south is higher than to the north. 
So it's always more crash-like behavior. And what we typically see if we go strongly south is an increasing volatility. And there might be, or not might be, there are already different um, underlyings for that. And for S&P 500, it's called VIX. And for DAX, for example, it's called VDAX or VDAX. Um, so you, you, you might look for those as well. Um, but or you finally, what we might use is simply the ATR, the average true range. So as an indicator of volatility. So normally, when we go into a crash phase, volatility is increasing dramatically. So that might be a good exit signal. So I'm not thinking about using that volatility as a stop loss um, knob. No, I want to use volatility as an exit. Normally, volatility goes extremely upwards when we have those crash phases. And the crash phases are the one I want to protect ourselves. So that's an idea how we might uh, come up with a little bit better behavior than we have up to now here. So that's the idea. And that's the idea for part three. So in a nutshell, nevertheless, we have achieved already a lot of things. Even our um, equity of our equity lines of our portfolio are still more or less the same than from first part. So we don't have an outstanding improvement by combination of EMA trailing and highs. If we go just for highs, for example, we have already a fantastic strategies, um, which is really well, is really doing well. And we are already beating the benchmark by far. It's uh, about a, a factor of three to four. We are beating the benchmark, which is really well, but still we have those drawdowns. And so we, we, we need to calm them down. So, so that is the idea uh, we, we have established here, taking into account volatility um, or other uh, exit signals. So it should be a little bit better, although our result up to now is already really well. Let's see what we can do. And um, we will do it in October at uh, the 18th of um, October will be part three. And there are other webinars as well during the next month. Just have a look to the JFT webpage um, to see what happens else. Yeah, and if you have interest in those Excel sheets, no problem. I share all of them with you. And just send me an email here to the mentioned uh, email address. I know it's complicated. S.Friedrichowski at JFT Brokers. And the good thing is, if you do any spelling error until the end, it will, um, the email will get to JFT um, and they will forward directly those emails to me. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, nothing. Um, yeah, can be done wrong here. Finally, that's very good. So I hope you enjoyed, one, enjoyed once again the webinar and um, hopefully see you again in October. Um, yeah, month is nearly over um, from next weekend onwards. Have a good time. Have a good evening. See you. Bye-bye.